Hello, I'm Stefan Kreber, the project leader for LexD, and continuing the series on LexD devices, this time we're going to be looking at the proxy device. Proxy device is a bit of a special one because there is no equivalent in the physical world. Uh, it's a purely logical device uh, that LexD supports, which helps with effectively doing some amount of network magic. It's not really named after anything network related because it can do things outside of the, what most people associate with network. Like you can technically use it with things like Unix sockets, uh, which don't require any kind of uh, network IP address, for example. Now, um, what exactly can that device do? Well, as the name implies, it proxies stuff around and it can do it in either direction. So it can take an address of some kind on the host system and forward that traffic into something running inside of the instance, or it can do it the other way around, uh, listening in for traffic inside of the instance and then forwarding any traffic arriving on, on that onto something external uh, to the system. There are some um, complications kind of on the way it works, uh, depending on the instance types. All features are supported on containers, but uh, a lot of the more advanced features just don't work with virtual machines because we can't, unlike with containers, we can't easily run a process both inside and outside of the instance and relay traffic. Uh, so for virtual machines, effectively the only mode that's supported is what we've got defined here as NAT mode, uh, which is the simplest type of, of proxying really which is what you would normally use as a normal NAT rule. And that's in fact exactly what LexD does, is it just generates the rule that's needed inside of the host firewall, and it will then forward traffic. Uh, this kind of proxy device can only work if the host that the instance is running on is its gateway. If you're using any kind of networking where that's not true, whether it's a physical network, SRUV, Mac VLAN, uh, an external bridge, any of that kind of stuff, it won't work, um, but for the cases where, um, for, for those cases where the host is the gateway, which is the default for something like LexDVR0, uh, then it's gonna work just fine. Now, on the container side of things, there's definitely um, quite a few things it can do. And that's why it gets really interesting and why it's not just a simple natural type thing. Um, it can do your basic TCP, TCP, UDP, UDP type proxying. So that could be handled by a natural, but it can also proxy traffic between Unix sockets. Uh, that's used in some of the examples and other videos we have on th running things like Steam or the GUI applications inside of the containers, uh, because we then use a proxy device or a set of proxy device to carry the graphical GUI traffic from the container onto the whole system. And same thing for things like the um, sound socket. So like all of the microphone and um, speaker output. That's pretty nice on its own, uh, but what it, what it gets really funny is that it can actually do it across protocol too. So you can totally have a TCP listener on the whole system that then forwards to Unix socket inside of the container or do the opposite and listen on Unix socket and then forward to TCP. Uh, you can even uh, transfer traffic between TCP and UDP if you want to. Uh, not that that's usually a good idea given the uh, UDP not having the same kind of guarantees as TCP as far as you know, not losing traffic, uh, but it is possible. And you can even do UDP to Unix socket or the reverse. Uh, the proxy device supports doing all of that because it's effectively a process that runs in both um, the host and the, and the container and can then relay, relay traffic uh, between the two. As far as configuration, uh, it comes with a couple of very key keys. Uh, one is listen, which is what should it listen to? Uh, listen on, so that could be TCP, some IP address for some port, um, and then connect, which is where it should uh, send the traffic to when it gets a connection on its listen side. And by default, it's gonna listen on the host side and forward into the, into the container. Um, but you can change that with the bind key to reverse that where you effectively tell it, no, actually I want the listen socket to be inside of the instance and then connect uh, through the host. So yeah, you can do some pretty interesting stuff there. The other thing it supports is proxy protocol, uh, which was uh, an extension created by HA proxy back in the days. I believe this date's more standard. Uh, effectively, that means that even though 
LexDE is the one receiving the TCP connection and then it connects itself to your target service and that effectively um, completely loses any information you have about the connecting um, IP address. The proxy protocol uh, sends an extra header to the target service, which can inform it about what the actual IP address is of the client that's connecting. Uh, not all services support that, but uh, the usual ones do. Like you can use the Proxy, Nginx, Apache, a whole bunch of different software will support the proxy protocol header uh, and will work just fine. As mentioned, there's the NAT uh, key that's used for only the most simple type of proxies where it can be set to true and that's the requirement for virtual machines. Uh, then you've got the keys that are related to using Unix sockets um, because using Unix sockets, you're dealing with files, so you're dealing with file permissions. So that's why you've got UID, GID and mode being there. And then you have to also consider what happens if you're connecting to a Unix socket, uh, whether it's on the host or whether it's in the, the container. And that's why we've got the security UID and security GID uh, config keys, which instructs the proxy to connect as a specific user. Uh, that's to avoid effectively connecting as root when we don't need to, which could cause some issues as far as like permission checks and that kind of stuff on specific services. Because Unix sockets are a bit special in that they actually know the UID and GID of the, the connection that's, that they're receiving. And so um, not having that lineup of the right user in some cases can cause issues. That's pretty much it for the config keys on the proxy devices. So now we can go and take a look at how that actually works. And for that, I've got, uh, kind of as usual, a container and a VM here. Nothing too special. And we're going to be starting with the, the more usual stuff. So just the basic NAT um, type uh, proxying. For that, uh, it's usually best to have static addresses on those containers and VMs. So what I'm going to do is config device override on both of them. And I'm going to be overriding the main interface and then set an IPv4 address that's fixed. So we're going to do 79.101 on this one. And then on the other one, I'm going to do 102. And usually that kind of needs a reboot. Yeah. Because Otherwise, we need to wait for the DHCP leases and everything to expire and get renewed, which would take a while. So the container is good already. The VM is just putting back up. It should be using its correct IP soon. There we go. So with that done, now the idea is that uh, I'm going to be starting terminals in both of those. So I want C1 here and I want V1 here. And I'm going to be listening on port 1234 in both cases. Uh, actually, I can do dash V so we can see incoming connections. Okay. And now the goal is for if I, I would like to connect on port 1001 on their gateway IP and arrive in the first one uh, in C1 and then 1002 and arrive on V1 instead. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is config device add C1. Um, uh, let's just call it uh, foo. Uh, it's a proxy device. And what we need, so we want the NAT to be enabled, so not true. And then on the listen side, we want TCP on 1048.79.1 on port 1001. And on the connect side, we want that to land in 1048, 79, 101 on port 1234. I forgot the protocol here, so it's DCP. So something like that. And then we do the same thing for the VM, but with the different port. Okay, and now let's try to connect on to 1048, 79, 1, 1001. There we go. So I connected on the first one and then 2002 connected on the second one. So that's your most basic proxy device using a NAT rule. Pretty much as simple as it gets. Now let's go ahead and remove that from both of them. So we're going to be removing foo. And from now on, we're going to be ignoring the VM because everything else only works in containers. There we go. Um, first thing we're going to be doing here is now Add the proxy device again, 
but let's get rid of the NAT and instead use the proxy protocol. And that's on C1 that we want that. And still, as only one, two, one, two, three, four, but we just need uh, to change the IP here. There we go. Now, if I connect on 10, 48, 79, 1, what was it in one? Okay, you can see it connected again, but this time a header showed up here. That's the proxy protocol header, and that tells me uh, who's the, what's the source, what's the destination. Uh, obviously, it doesn't really help here because I'm connecting from the machine itself, so both source and destination are the same. Uh, then it shows the source port and it shows the destination port. Um, so even though the the container itself doesn't know um, who connected to it. As far as it's concerned, it itself connected to itself effectively. Um, it still gets information and you could still use that within uh, the likes of HAProxy logs or Nginx or anything like that. So that's pretty convenient. Now for our next party trick, let's remove that again. Uh, what we're going to be doing is instead of connecting to that TCP socket, because that's kind of boring, let's connect to a Unix socket. So instead we're going to be connecting to foo.soc. Um, oh yeah, proxy protocol, not a thing in this case. Remove that and add it. There we go. So now if I want to listen on a Unix socket, uh, oops, I forgot dash out. There we go. Uh, and then I connect. Still works the exact same way. So now I'm connecting over TCP to that IP on the host, and it's forwarding it to the Unix socket inside of the guest. For our next party trick, uh, I mean, it still works with this one. It still works the way it is, but if we look, I still have a network device in there. So what if I didn't? Uh, so I'm just going to be doing a simple device add to C1, if zero, and non-pipe. Um, uh, oh, right, we already overrode the device. I forgot that. Uh, so let's just remove if zero, and then get rid of it completely. Okay, so now that container has no way out. There's literally no way for it to access the internet whatsoever. But say if it was running some web server on top of a Unix socket, you could run that. And with the proxy device on the host, it could get traffic. That can be very interesting from security point of view because you can now run services inside of LexD containers that have no way out whatsoever network-wise, but still receive incoming network connections through the proxy device with a Unix socket. Um, so that's very interesting. And as it stands right now, so if I was to reset this, I'm just going to show another point, uh, another one of the config keys. If I go there in the container again, so currently foo.soc is accessible by everyone. If we change that to just root, um, that would still work as it stands because we're accessing it as root. Uh, if I reset that there and we go and edit the config for the container, go see our proxy device, and let's change security UID 1000, security GID 1000. So now the proxy device is being instructed to connect as that particular user, and we see it fails because it's not allowed to access that socket. So it's just to show that we can control as what user um, what is going to be used to establish those connections. And if we move, remove that and go back to connecting as root, things work again. Now, um, one thing you can do, uh, kind of just for kicks, is also do the reverse. So let's say you had some web server you need to, you need to access, let's say Google. Um, you could take the IP address of Google, and now let's add a new proxy device. And this one, we're going to do the reverse. We're going to do bind equals instance instead of the default of bind host. In the instance, we're going to be listening on TMP google.soc. And on the host side, we're going to be connecting to Google on, let's do HTTP. 
oops, and a different device name. So, all right, so it's going to be bar. There we go. So now instead of the instance, we should have a new socket called google.sock. And if we access google.sock, um, that's going to fail, but whatever. If we show a it should be looking request, or in this case, something that's kind of bogus. Uh, we get a request directly from Google, a response from Google. If I do get, I actually end up getting the full HTML page of the Google front page. So that's another way you can technically have a completely isolated container that has no network out, but just has a few sockets to the services you need, whether it's your database or it's some other REST API it needs to interact with. You can pass those things through with a proxy device. You can control exactly the permissions um on those sockets and then run your service in there there's no network whatsoever and it can still interact with the outside world and you can do that with any protocol you want in this case i just did everything with a mix of tcp and unix but you can totally do that with uh, udp if you need to uh, and you can forward whichever way where you want and it's, it's a very very flexible tool um, maybe one of the main restrictions to keep in mind is that this is all being proxied uh, through a process running on the system. So every one of those proxy devices has a process running. You can see here called proc proxy. And we've got one here for um, that's proxying the incoming traffic to TMP and the other one that's processing, that's forwarding Google to Google. And that's fine, but if you're dealing with a lot of connections, very high throughput, um, that's might not that's gonna burn a bunch of cpu effectively um, that's why we support the nat mode because if you can use the nat mode and your system happens to be your gateway that's gonna be massively faster it's not gonna have that kind of overhead but also doesn't have the flexibility so it's really something to keep in mind um, and just find what works best for you uh, but could be a great tool for security it also allows for a lot of things that uh, are otherwise pretty problematic as mentioned, that's what we use to run GUI applications because we need to access a lot of Unix sockets to interact with either the X or Wayland server, um, as well as accessing things like Pipewire and Pulse Audio. And that's that's it for the proxy device. It's not the most used device. Uh, there's definitely a bunch of the, the users that we have on it tend to do some really interesting stuff for sure. Um, but the, the thing, the, the bulk of users are still using manual NAT rules and firewalls instead of relying on that. Uh, so hopefully that uh, inspires you to to potentially uh, do some pretty crazy setups, or at least to to look more into what it can do for you. Uh, if you've got any questions about uh, using proxy devices, you can leave them down below, uh, or you can go on our community forum and ask there. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.